Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending on where you are in the world right now, and welcome to our live coverage of the Soyuz TMA 05M docking to the International Space Station. This is Mission Control Houston. We're coming to you live from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where we're sitting with the Orbit 2 team right now, monitoring systems on board the station, and getting ready to welcome three new crew members to Expedition 52. Leading the team there on the right in the jacket is Anthony Varia, the flight director inside the room today. And just above him on your screen is Andreas Mogensen, the European Space Agency astronaut, who will be the CAPCOM for today, serving as the communication link between the team here at Mission Control Houston and the crew on board. And that crew is about to double in size with the arrival of three new Expedition 52 crew members representing three different countries from around the globe. They are NASA astronaut Randy Bresnik, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Rozansky, and European astronaut Paolo Nespoli. All three are spaceflight veterans with Bresnik and Rozansky making their second trips into space and Nespoli making his third. The three launched in their Soyuz spacecraft just a few hours ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. That launch occurring at 10.41 a.m. Central Time, 11.41 a.m. Eastern, actually 9.41 p.m. at night over in Baikonur. They launched atop a Soyuz FG booster, all of the stages, the first, second, and third, performing as expected and sending them into space. This is a replay from earlier this morning. You can see the Soyuz rocket launching from site number one, the same pad that Sputnik launched from uh, over six, uh, 60 years ago this year. Uh, the Soyuz first stage lighting up the night sky there in Baikonur as it rocketed over the Kazakh steppe, the first stage, second stage, and third stage, all performing as expected. Actually, with it being a clear night, got some spectacular views. This, the first stage actually breaking away when its job had finished as the Soyuz climbed into orbit. As mentioned, everything went well, culminating with the end and the cutoff of the third stage, which, as you just saw there, gives the crew inside the Soyuz a bit of a jolt, but is the final signifier that they are in low Earth orbit, they're in space, and ready to chase down the International Space Station. You can see all three crew members celebrating for a bit there before getting right back to work and beginning their six-hour sprint to catch up with the orbiting laboratory. Everything's gone smoothly since then. The Soyuz executing a series of burns or firings of its engine to gradually raise its orbit, and all that culminating soon with the docking to the International Space Station, scheduled to occur just a little under 43 minutes from now, with docking targeted at the top of the hour at 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern, and that'll be the Soyuz spacecraft docking to the Rosfiat module, that's one of the docking compartments over on the Russian segment of the International Space Station, and it's on the space-facing side. Uh, so we'll see the Soyuz craft approach the station from underneath and then dock to Rosviet. Everything's going to be automated, but once they're docked, they'll get ready for hatch opening shortly after. Here you can see just uh, the makeup of the International Space Station and some of the vehicles currently attached. The MS-04 and Progress 67 already attached, and then you can see where Soyuz MS-05 is going to be just a little under 42 minutes from now. This is a view inside of the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, just outside of Moscow. They've been controlling and overseeing the flight ever since the Soyuz separated from the third stage of the Soyuz rocket uh, just a few hours ago, and they'll be overseeing the final stages of this docking and the hatch opening. As again, three crew members just about to join the crew of Expedition 52 on board the station. And they'll join the three crew members already on board, right now led by Expedition 52 Commander Fyodor Yurchikin, and he's joined on there right now by two NASA astronauts, Peggy Whitson there at the top of your screen, and Jack Fisher at the bottom. If you're interested in what life is like in space, be sure to follow each of them on their various accounts as they give you day-to-day -day looks pretty much in, inside the life of a crew member on board the International Space Station. Your Cheekin and Fisher have been on board since April, but for Peggy Whitson, who actually launched back in November of last year, uh, she's been on board for quite some time, um, over 253 days now, actually. And she's scheduled to come home with Fisher and your Cheekin in early September. For the three crew members almost there, though, they'll be staying until... Uh, about early to mid-December, so spending about four and a half months on board the orbiting laboratory. 
where there will be crew members of Expedition 52 and then also 53 following the departure of Fisher, Yurchikin, and Whitson. And on board the NASA astronaut Randy Bresnik, a retired Marine colonel, making his second flight into space. He'll actually take over as the commander of Expedition 53 when those other three depart. And again, just another social media point out for them. You can follow Randy Bresnik throughout his space flight on various accounts, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Astro Comrade. For now, though, we're just under 40 minutes away from the planned docking. Uh, everything, again, has gone smoothly up until this point. Following the flight into orbit on the Soyuz rocket, the spacecraft separates and then executes a series of what's known as delta velocity burns. So these are firings of the primary engines on the Soyuz spacecraft to raise its orbit or raise its altitude um, as it continues to orbit the Earth. When it initially gets into space, it's at an altitude of about 125 statute miles over the last several hours has raised that all the way up to 250 to be right around the same area as the International Space Station. And it started about 2,000 miles behind the station and has since caught up as it's raised its orbit and pretty soon it'll be closing in. We should be getting some video views from the station itself and then hopefully some views from the Soyuz cameras right on the front as it continues to, to fly in. There will be a number of milestones to look out for coming up. They've been testing all of the various communication equipment on board the vehicle, which again docks automatically using something called the Coors Rendezvous and Docking System. Uh, but they always have the option if there's ever an issue with that system, the pilot on board, in this case Sergey Rosansky, can take over and manually dock the spacecraft himself. Right now, though, they're continuing to do a, what's known as impulse burn, so basically fine-tunings of their approach towards the International Space Station. Eventually, they'll get to a distance of only about 400 meters where they'll execute what's known as a fly-around. And depending on the um, trajectory or which docking port they're going to, that'll look drastically different, whether they need to fly over to the top, but in this case, they're approaching the bottom part of the station, so... Uh, they should be looking pretty much at the station the whole time, uh, and, but that just gets them into their final alignment with their docking port. But as of right now, the Soyuz continuing to close in on the International Space Station. It's still at a distance of a little over five kilometers away. Again, the, the next major milestone to look out for will be that fly around. That's when we enter some of the final stages of the docking operation. They'll do the fly around when they're about 400 meters away and then do the start of what's known as station keeping. Again, just that's at the, after the fly around has been executed, station keeping allows them to do any final fine tuning and then line up for that docking port on Rosfiat and then head in for the final approach. This now a view from a camera on board the Soyuz spacecraft. And you can see a lot of uh, the different numbers, a lot of data as we refer to it as telemetry here inside the mission control center. Two numbers to keep your eye on. In the bottom left corner there, the 4.8 km, that's their distance away from the station, so they're a little under 4.8 kilometers away. And then just beneath that is the rate of closure, so meters per second. And during their final approach, we'll actually see that drop all the way down to only about a tenth of a meter per second. So during that final approach in, uh, the vehicle moving very slowly and very deliberately, but still with enough speed to ensure that when the docking probe is at the correct position to drive into the docking compartment, there's enough force to make sure it's in place. But as you can, as you can see, the station already in the sights of the Soyuz craft 
and we'll be keeping an eye out to see if any of the external cameras on the space station are able to spot the Soyuz as it continues on end. Right now we're about 35 minutes, 20 seconds away from the docking of Soyuz MS-05. Again, NASA's Randy Bresnik, Rose Cosmos, cosmonaut Sergei Rosansky, and ESA astronaut Paolo Nespoli from Italy all on board and eager to start their time as crew members of Expedition 52. So while the Soyuz spacecraft continues to close in, we actually have a pretty cool uh, treat to share with you here. Jack Fisher, one of the flight engineers on board, actually managed to capture this image of the launch from the International Space Station. As it was nighttime over the Earth when the Soyuz launched, and he was able to capture this using a camera on board the station, seeing a Bresnik, Rosansky, and Espoli rocket into space. So again, just telling you as i'll re-emphasize throughout the show if you're not following any of these crew members on social media you absolutely should you'll get a, a special dose of space in your life pretty much every day as they look to share their time and all the work the research and just the experiences they're having on board the international space station So right now, the Soyuz spacecraft continuing to close in on the International Space Station, just a little uh, over about two and a half kilometers away. Inside the MS-05, Sergey Rosansky, Randy Bresnik, and Paolo Nespoli. If you caught our launch show, you saw that the so uses essentially three different parts, and all three of the crew members right now residing inside of the descent module, which is right in the center. Kind of think of it as uh, the yolk inside of an egg, and that is the only portion that uh, comes back once the Soyuz returns to Earth at the end of its journey. Uh, but though they're packed in there in their Soka launch and entry suit still, and uh, pretty soon we'll be able to get out of there and move on board the International Space Station in just about 31 minutes from now.
наблюдается помехи на экране. We see some interferences on the screen and the the image is and this is a view from one of the HD cameras outside of the International Space Station. There you can see the Soyuz spacecraft as it begins to come well into view and is on its approach towards the station. It's under two kilometers away at this point. So again, what we're going to be looking out for is that 400 meter mark when they'll begin the fly around. It should be well in view by then, but getting some great views so far as the Soyuz carrying Sergei Rosansky, Randy Bresnik, and Paolo Nespoli just a little under 29 minutes and 40 seconds away from docking. Do you have any recommendations as far as how I can get rid of those that jump the image? Most is unintelligible. Now the, we don't have them anymore. The image is stable. Copy. And one more. Yes, right. And here a great view again. This is from a camera on the very top of the Soyuz spacecraft, the International Space Station, well in view here. This is just a little under 1.4 kilometers away and continuing to close in. Again, it's going to be docking today to the Rosviet module, also known as Mini Research Module 1. That's one of the Earth-facing ports, so pointing down towards the Earth on the Russian segment of the International Space Station. And this, again, just a, an animated mock-up of what the station is going to look like when the M once the MSO-5 is docked. You can see it on the left there. Um, two other vehicles, the MSO-4 and Progress 67, already attached on the Russian segment. MSO-5 will be uh, the newest comer to deliver crew to the station, and it's going to remain docked again until December when these three crew members will have uh, wrapped up their four and a half months on orbit and get ready to come home. For now, though, everything continuing to go smoothly uh, with what started as a flawless launch into orbit has uh, continued as a flawless ascent towards the International Space Station, just a little under 1.2 kilometers away and continuing to close in. Delta V is going to be six meters. Copy. Next burn is at 0035 with delta V of 6 meters. Confirm depot thrust is activation. Copy. Range is 900 meters. Range rate is 2.74 meters per second. Copy. Can you play back one dot here? Yeah. 
We confirm DPO is no longer illuminated. A range rate is 2.4, and the external cameras are working nominally. We copy. So everything continuing to go smoothly. The station and the Soyuz actually just about to fly right over Puerto Rico and the British Virgin Islands. So they're going to continue on this northeasterly track, eventually crossing over the Atlantic Ocean. And there you can see just some of the brilliant blues backdropping the Soyuz spacecraft as it continues to close in. And as of right now, we are just about 24 and a half minutes away from the planned docking. Moscow, MCC Moscow, Barry, go ahead. Go ahead, Barry. For whatever reason, the calm was off for a second, and then it came back up again. Now it's back up again. It was off, like... All of it was off, all the assets. So if you were saying anything, we did not copy. Range is 500 meters. Uh, range rate is 1.5 meters per second, and external cameras are working nominally. And it was about a minute ago? Yeah, we saw it about 30 seconds ago. Sorry. What exactly went off OFF? Was it like the messages on the KSP computer? And one and three, but five were off. And the transmit button was uh, depressed, so that's why UKV5 transmit also went off. So once we activated the come back up again, we called you. Copy. And you resorted on your own, right? Yes. Range rate is 427 meters. Range rate is 1.3. And the cameras are working nominally. Copy. And I see the and I see the docking node. So they're a great view head-on of the Soyuz MS-05. The Earth passing by in the background at this point. They're out over the Atlantic Ocean. And we just got confirmation that the fly-around has begun. So at this point, the vehicle is basically flying into its final approach attitude. So basically lining itself up with the Rosviet module to which it's going to be docking. And we confirm fly-around. Once the fly around's complete, they'll begin what's known as station keeping, uh, but the fly around typically only taking a few minutes. And we see that the accelerometer is no longer illuminated. Bobby.
the Soyuz continuing to close in right now, just a little under 330 meters away. And again, that rate of closure, that, that speed that it approaches the International Space Station going to continue to slow down. Right now, it's at about three quarters of a meter per second. And then we expect it during that final approach to slow all the way down to about a tenth of a meter per second. So very slow, but very deliberate final approach towards the docking compartment there on the International Space Station. Inside that vehicle right there, the Soyuz MS-05, Sergei Rosansky, the Soyuz commander in the center seat. Uh, in the left seat, NASA astronaut Randy Bresnik, and in the right seat, European astronaut Paolo Nespoli from Italy, all waiting again. They're less than 20 minutes away from the planned docking time. Pretty soon they'll be attached and getting ready to go inside the International Space Station. Video cameras are working nominally. Near angle video cameras, and we copy. And 23.4 and 29 are the angles. How do you see the station in the VSK? Actually, much better than on the cam camera. And if you if you look at the clouds beneath the Soyuz, you're starting to see some long shadows as they are getting towards an orbital nighttime. Range rate is zero point. So they're actually approaching the Terminator line, that line between night and day over the Earth's surface as they continue to fly out over the Atlantic Ocean. Sunset on the station actually is scheduled to come in about 14 minutes, but the Soyuz for now continuing to close in. Good daylight, getting great views of that vehicle. And as you can see here, starting to line up now, a little over 240 meters away. We see the, we are 217 meters. We're in the final approach. Copy, and the range rate is 0 0.32. Copy. Do you see the KK-15 command illuminated? Come again. Do you see uh, K-15? I, I do see K-15. And we are performing the roll maneuver. Copy. And the range is 213. Meters, the range rate 0 0.18, video cameras are working nominally. Bearing angles uh, 213 and 232. And we have combined get SO and we confirm station keeping and we confirm get SO. And so with that, the fly around complete now in what's known as station keeping. So basically just making sure they're getting all their final lineups in order before the final approach begins. At 0444, we sent the final approach command. And so with that, the visiting vehicle officer confirming final approach has begun. So the Soyuz MS-05 under 200 meters away, driving now towards its docking port on the Rosviet module, ready to deliver three new crew members to the space station. What about the floodlight? Floodlight is on. Would you please uh, activate the sky light? Thank you. And could you please, if you need, use AGC mode? Is it better like this? Much better. 
It much better on range is so the crew moving very quickly actually ahead of schedule already in their final approach docking originally slated to happen at about 5 p.m central but looks like they were able to move things very quickly not having any issues with the vehicle and so already in their final approach under 150 meters away heading towards the rossviet module and a dock to the international space station Sixty four, copy. The crew is talking to each other. Range is one twenty meters. Range rate is zero point seventy one. External video cameras are working nominally. We copy. Guys, do you see the docking node? So he's well in view now, under 100 meters away. One square. And it's a little bit up by 90 meters. The very front that we're looking at is essentially the top of the vehicle, also known as the orbital module, and has the docking probe that uh, will be making contact with the Rossviet module. There's a docking cone. And then we'll be able to make that initial contact and capture, and then a soft dock for a series of latches engaged, and then hard mate the Soyuz vehicle into place. Just about 75 meters away, continuing to close. It's at about three tenths of a meter per second, and it's going to continue to slow down during the very final phases of this approach. But everything lined up, everything going very well with the vehicle. So you can definitely see uh, nighttime starting to come into view on the Earth below. And external cameras are working nominally. We'll copy. MSO5 just 67 meters away. Fifty is the range. Zero point two is range rate. External cameras are working nominally. And we confirm that SSVP docking system redness is illuminated, the line is illuminated, the hooks are open, and the hooks are closed. SSVP is ready. Docking system is ready. And we are working for page 65. Affirmative. Range is 40 meters. Range rate is 0 0.19. And external cameras are working no nominally. So continuing with the theme of the day, everything going great with the spacecraft and all of the systems on board the station during this final approach. Just about 40 meters away from the Rosviet module, the Soyuz MS-05 closing in. Range is 35 meters. Range rate is 0 0.14. And crosshairs are aligned. Copy.
and a short loss in our video signal from the International Space Station. Should hopefully get that video back momentarily, but so he's very close now. 0 0.3 is range 0 0.30. Two is the range rate and external cameras are working nominally. Crosshairs are aligned. Copy. And eclipse isn't going is going to be in five minutes. Copy. Range is twenty six meter meters. Range rate is zero point fourteen. External cameras are working nominally. We copy. The crosshairs are aligned. We are receiving the image back. And we have the confirmation that the docking system is ready. We copy. So relying on audio right now is our visual communications will be a bit ratty, as they like to say, so intermittent here for the next few minutes. The Soyuz very close, though, to its docking. We'll make sure to get a, a docking time and a docking confirmation from all the visiting vehicle folks here in Houston, about 20 meters away. And external cameras are working nominally. The crosshairs are aligned. Copy. And I can see Columbus. Range is 16 meters. 0 0.09 is range rate and crosshairs are aligned. So again, at this point, the Soyuz is moving very slowly but very deliberately towards its docking port on Rosfiat. Should expect docking any moment now, both uh, the docking mechanism on the station and the docking probe on the Soyuz powered up and ready. 12 is rain. Crew calling about 12 meters away. Still video cameras are working nominally. And what is unintelligible? About two degrees. And the crosshairs are unintelligible. Range 10 meters, 0 0.01 is range rate, and the external cameras are working nominally because the crosshairs are aligned. Six meters is range rate. The crosshairs are aligned. Copy. And they get a brief view from the camera on the Soyuz, as you can see, just under ten meters away. Almost there, standing by for capture. The crosshairs are aligned. Contact. Confirmed. And contact and capture confirmed. The station and the Soyuz flying 252 statute miles over Germany. Soyuz MS-05 vehicle docked to the International Space Station. We close. So with that, the docking probe will retract, bringing the Soyuz closer into Rosfiat, and then they'll be able to begin the final stages of docking, which will be the latch series of latches engaging both on the Soyuz and on Rosviet to hard mate or really hold the Soyuz vehicle in place. But again, docking confirmed 4.54 p.m. Central Time, 5.54 p.m. Eastern Time. 
while the station was flying 252 statute miles over Germany. We have selected this as a display. We copy. Bore, how do you copy us? The floodlight is off. And we are ready for the first measurement. And how do you copy us? We read you loud and clear now. S up pressure is H27. B up H33. Here you can see the probe continuing to retract, drawing the Soyuz vehicle in closer to Rosviet, where it's going to remain attached for the next four and a half months. So right now they're about halfway done with the probe driving. And again, after that, a series of hooks. Latches will engage, locking the Soyuz craft in space to Rosviet, and then docking will be complete. And that'll all uh, set us up, of course, for the eventual hatch opening. They'll spend about an hour doing a series of leak checks. Also give the crew inside the Soyuz a chance to get out of those Soka launch and entry suits that they wear for all of the dynamic phases of operation on board the Soyuz spacecraft. Then they'll be able to open up the hatches and join their crew members on board, and then Expedition 52 will be back at full strength with six crew members on board the station. But for now, Sergey Rosansky, Randy Bresnik, Paolo Nespoli dock to the station, just a few hours moving into their new home for the next four and a half months. And as a reminder, this is a view from the balcony of the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, just outside of Moscow. They've been overseeing the flight ever since it, the Soyuz detached from the uh, Soyuz rocket at the end of its flight into orbit. And they're going to continue overseeing everything uh, for the next couple hours as we do all of these leak checks and get ready to open up the hatch between the Soyuz and the hatch uh, into the International Space Station. And visiting vehicle officer here in Houston, confirming the hook's now driving. So the Soyuz one step closer now to hard mate, uh, or basically a firm docking into Rosviet, securing it in place where it's going to remain over the next four and a half months, and taking off one more milestone in today's operation, just one step closer to getting these three new crew members inside the station. We have D-15, copy. D-13, 
protein indicator is no longer illuminated. We copy. So at this moment, we've already got confirmation the hooks on the Soyuz itself have driven and are closed. And then the whole series of hooks on the Rosfiat module are in the process of closing as well. And after that, we'll essentially have a hard mate and we'll be ready to wrap up our docking coverage. But everything going very smoothly today uh, with what started as a launch eventually culminating in this docking uh, with the crew docking ahead of schedule, getting there about six minutes early at 4.54 p.m. Central Time, 5.54 p.m. Eastern, while the station was flying at about 252 statute miles over Germany. And we just got confirmation that the hooks on Rosfiat have closed. So that'll we'll go ahead and bring an end to our docking coverage today. Just a reminder that we'll still have some more stuff coming up for you. So with docking out of the way, we're going to break away for about an hour, coming back on the air at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern for our hatch opening coverage. And that hatch opening right now targeted at about 6.40 p.m. Central. Uh, the crew docked early, so we'll see if they get the hatch open early as well. But once the hatches are ready, all the pressures get equalized, and they finish their series of leak checks, the hatchways will open, and Sergey Rosansky, Randy Bresnik, and Paolo Nespoli will make their way from the Soyuz spacecraft onto the International Space Station. And then immediately after that hatch opening, they'll get a chance to talk with family, friends, and other guests from the various space agencies who have been watching all of these events unfold uh, over in Baikonur and Kazakhstan, watching them launched just about six hours ago and watching this docking and getting ready to see them head into the station just about an hour or so from now. And then, of course, at the end of the night tonight, we'll have our post-docking and hatch opening video file, just giving you a highlight reel of all of the events as they unfolded today. So I want to thank you for tuning in wherever you are around the globe to our docking coverage today. Got treated to a very picturesque view of the Soyuz as it made its final approach ultimately docked, bringing three new crew members to the International Space Station where they're going to reside doing research, maintenance, and other activities for the next four and a half months. So with that, we'll wrap up docking coverage. Join us again in about an hour as we get ready to open up the hatches and see three new faces move into the orbiting laboratory. With that, we will go ahead and sign off. This is Mission Control Houston.